All right, Shalom. I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be able to come out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And according to the Holy Bible, you are the biblical Israelites. This is based off of your father's paternal line. It's about agnet relations that determine whether or not you're an Israelite or you're a heathen, okay? This is not a so-called black or white thing. Mingling those two shades together, you get gray. And there are no gray areas in this ministry, okay? And seeing our people have been dispersed all throughout the earth, we look like all nations under the sun. But we also got to let these other nations know their future and their judgment also. Because we are a prophet unto the nations. So before I get started, as always, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. And what is his name? Yahweh! Bahashem Yahweh Shai! Bahashem Wabrakakwadash! Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai because without him endearing and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. So right now we are mortal, but eventually the mortal is going to become immortal. And it starts with this knowledge, wisdom and understanding. It starts with the belief in our Lord and Savior who the world ignorantly and rebelliously will call Jesus Christ even after hearing the truth. But at the end of the day, this is all about the elect. I'm speaking to the hopeful elect out there. So I'm gonna go on ahead and get into it with 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. So right now we're mortal men. But we're going to be changed and made immortal. And this mortal must put on immortality. And to be immortal, that means you can't die. Because in order to have an everlasting kingdom, you'll need to have an everlasting body. A.K.A. an immortal body to go with an immortal kingdom. Okay? Verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory so thanks to Yahweh Shai our Lord and Savior he overcame death he defeated death and those who follow him are going to conquer and defeat death as well and eventually it's going to be made manifest we're going to be changed into immortals, all right? Given new bodies, perfect bodies. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So a part of the new covenant is to not sin anymore and to have these laws written in our inward parts. So there would be no need for us to die again, seeing that we're going to be made perfect in the world to come. And these current bodies that we have will definitely be changed. Psalms chapter 82 in verse 6 I have said ye are gods. So we are gods. In the future we're literally going to be gods because we're going to be gods over the earth. We're going to be judges over all the earth. Alright? I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. 
And when you go into that word children, it goes into the word son or grandson. But it speaks of the males of Israel, not excluding that women are a part of this. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Because right now we're corruptible. But we're going to be made incorruptible just as our Lord and Savior was made incorruptible. When he was here on earth, he was a mortal man. And that's why the men who were able to grab him up and crucify him and kill him were successful at that moment. But that was all biblical prophecy. It had to happen. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 47. In verse 3, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and will not meet thee as a man. So when Yahweh Shai returns, he's not going to return as a normal person. He's not returning as a mortal, but he's returning as an immortal. And we are going to be changed in his likeness because we're hoping to be joint heirs with our Lord and Savior. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and will not meet thee as a man. So when Yahweh Shai returns, he's not going to return like a mere mortal. Revelations 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, speaking of so-called spaceships, and every eye shall see him, and they which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. And the reason why is because he's not going to return as a man. He's going to return as an immortal with fierce power. He's coming back to conquer and to destroy his enemies and to deliver his elect. That's what it's going to be. So seeing that the corruptible is going to be made incorruptible, thanks to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, we're going to be joint heirs with him. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the power. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the power and joint heirs with Mashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And part of us being glorified together is for our corruptible body to be made incorruptible. We're going to be changed into immortals. We're going to have power and dominion. See, the scriptures tell you in Job 9 and 24, I can just read it. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. Job chapter 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So where are the gods? Where are the judges? Esau is trying to go about this earth claiming our identity, claiming that they're the real Jews, which would make them the Israelites, correct? But they're not the people. Now, although the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, they weren't given dominion to all the earth because only so much of the earth has been discovered. When you look at the Amazon, most of it has not been discovered. You'll hear rumors about Bigfoot. You'll hear rumors about Wolfman, all these different things. And then you'll have people say, well, you got to be a conspiracy nut to believe such a thing. But you don't understand that Yahweh Ba Shemi was Shai, his works are innumerable. And more of the earth has been undiscovered than what's been discovered. But when we become immortal, when we become changed, we're going to have access to all the earth except for Babylon because this place is going to be wiped off the face of the map and we'll never step foot on this land again once that happens, all right? But everything outside of that, we'll have access to. We'll be able to set our feet upon it, okay? So let's go back to where I was. Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the power and joint heirs with Mashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So we have to suffer with Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai so that we may be glorified with Yahweh Shai. 
Revelations chapter 2 and verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So we have to conquer. We have to overcome. We have to endure in hopes to be joint heirs with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay? That's the man. That's the guy. Okay? That's who I thrive to be like. That's who I want to be like, man. And with all these different celebrities, all these so-called influencers of the world, that don't mean nothing to me. I want to be like Yahweh Shai. I want to be joint heirs with him. And I wouldn't mind being next to him when he returns. That's what I want. And I hope it happens, man. But it's um, yet to be seen who are the men of the Lord. But we have an idea. We have an idea. If you're spiritual, you have an idea. So we have to endure to be joint heirs. We have to overcome. Let's read it again in Revelations 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So if we endure, we're going to be given authority over the nations. All right? Let's go to Psalms chapter 110. And three, and part of that power, part of enduring that power that we'll receive is immortality. Psalms 110 and three. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness. So once we receive that power, our people will be willing. Once they see, we're definitely set apart from everybody else. We're definitely um, being glorified by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And once it comes to pass that you can't even question who the Lord is dealing with, then people are going to be willing in that day. Okay? Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness. And that also shows you that although all of our people are going to receive the kingdom, all of our people are not going to be on the same level. The elect are going to be different from the rest of the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou has to do of thy youth and will never wax old why because we're going to be made immortals we're going to be given that power okay and the reason why our people will also be willing in the day of our power let me see if i can find it here Give me a moment. I'm almost there. I know I'm close. Okay, so this is the book of Matthews chapter 19 and verse 28. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also, ye shall also sit upon the twelve thrones of judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's why our people are going to be willing in the day of our power. Because if we're of the elect, we're going to be at a higher level than anybody else, man. Even our people seeing that all Israel is going to be saved, all Israel is not going to be on the same level. All you Israelites on this side who are doing good in the kingdom, you're going to be doing great. But nevertheless, you're not going to be on the same level as the 100 44,000 starting with the 12 starting with Peter John and James and so forth and then the 13th member although there weren't 13 disciples the 13th member would be like Paul Paul would be like 13th in rank after the 12 so in the kingdom of heaven there's going to be an order but all of you Israelites outside of the 144,000 you're not going to have the same uh rank at all you're not going to be able to do the same things that the elect are going to be able to do you'll have power 
You'll have multiple wives. You'll have everlasting life. But you won't have the same ability as the elect. The elect will have access to be around Yahweh Shai himself. You may have to be on the waiting list. Okay? Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 2 and verse 7. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. And that's what it is. Eternal life is immortality. It's the same thing. People don't understand what Yahweh Shai is promising those who follow him of the house of Jacob. Those who were called and chosen from the beginning, those uh, people in particular are very special. And there's nothing that anyone or anything can do to remove that position from you. You are who you are. Regardless of man accepting you or not accepting you, you are who you are, okay? To them who by patient continuous, continuance, because remember, we have, we have to endure to receive that power. I read that in Revelations 2 and 26. To them who by patient continuance, so we got to keep continuing, and well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So being in this ministry, be expecting the perks as well. A lot of men, they only focus on negative things. Oh, I'm catching hell. Oh, Esau's afflicting me. Oh, my body's giving me hell. But what about all the great things we have to look forward to? Okay? And seeing that Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, is going to give us everything. Why not focus on those things? Luke 1 and 37, for with the power, nothing shall be impossible. So nothing is too hard. For Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. There's nothing that can't be done. There's nothing that he can't do. In fact, in order for you to have an imagination and to think upon certain things, the Lord will never allow you to imagine something that he couldn't do anyway. But there's nothing he can't do. All right? In this earth, in this life of carnal things where people want things to be proven, People believe in physical things, things that you can touch, tangible things. But people don't believe the impossibilities of the Lord. Okay, and when I say the impossible, the impossibilities, the things that he can do that, that are literally impossible for man to do. All right? Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the power must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So he's a rewarder. He's going to give wages to those who diligently seek him. Okay? That's what we have to look forward to. Everlasting life. Power over the earth. Power over the nations. Okay? Power to judge our own people in the kingdom to come, although our people are going to be righteous. Our people are not going to go off, but there's going to be a difference. There's going to be a separation between the elect and the rest of the nation of Israel and the kingdom. The Lord doesn't have us fighting for no reason. So without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And you must have faith that we're going to receive power, so be that we endure. Matthew 14 and verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahweh Shai went unto them, walking on the sea. So Yahweh Shai walked on water. We'll have that ability in the kingdom. We'll be able to walk on water. Seeing that we'll be made immortal, seeing that we'll be given power, we'll be able to do miraculous things. All right? I just saw the number seven and five, which is complete power, and also the number 12. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. So you got to imagine seeing this man walking on water from a distance. 
in your mind, you're thinking, okay, that must be a spirit. And you start bugging out. That's what most of us would do, not knowing what was going on. It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway, Yahweh Shai spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So Yahweh Shai is telling his disciples, Look, it's me, calm down. Don't be afraid, because having faith also comes with being confident, it comes with courage. You got to set your fears and your doubts to the side. All right. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahweh Shai. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. So when Peter started to get shaky because that flesh started kicking in, he started to sink into the water. But remember, when the disciples saw Yahweh Shai walking on the water, he told them, don't be fearful. It's me. So when Peter started walking on water, when he started to fear what happened, he started to sink. And the same thing can happen with us. The second that we start to fear, the second that we start to lose faith, you start to lose confidence. You start to fall into that sunken place. And that's not a good place to be. All right. But the thing is, if you're Yahweh Shai's um, sheep, he's not going to let you sink completely. And immediately Yahweh Shai stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. So that was a powerful moment, man. That was a very powerful moment. And that's something that we can learn from. Don't doubt. Because doubt puts you in a sunken place. Doubting puts you in a state of losing confidence. All right? But the thing is, if you have a little bit of faith, you still have something to go by compared to someone who doesn't have any faith all right which is most people second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 14 let go from thee mortal thoughts cast away the burdens of man put off now the weak nature so we have to set aside that weak nature we have to set aside thoughts that weigh down our faith thoughts that try to put us into that sunken place now seeing that there's a lot of opposition around us it's easy to get overwhelmed that's why we cast our burdens on the lord and we don't bear the burdens ourselves okay because we ourselves are not strong enough to fight this battle but he who is with us he who guides us is definitely strong. Verse 15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. So when Peter walked on water, he was pondering on fleshly things. So when that wind started to blow, he got intimidated. But once that happened, he started to sink into the water. So the Messiah reached his hand out and told him, don't be fearful. And that's what he's telling his disciples today. Guess what? Those people are back on earth and they're known as the Israelites. And now losing faith, that means you never had faith. But to have your faith waver, to have your faith shaky, that's something that the Lord can still work with. That seed of faith being planted in you, the Lord can still work with you. All right. But nevertheless, we have to do our best not to waver. And to be bold and confident. Okay? It's beautiful how the sun is shining through the clouds, man. It has a heavenly look. How the ray of light is coming out of the sky like that. Matthews. Chapter 17. And verse 20. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Because of your unbelief, 
For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So through faith, nothing is impossible. That's why in the kingdom of heaven, we are going to have the ultimate faith. That's how we'll be able to do the miraculous things we'll be able to do. Because we'll have a faith so high, we'll have an abundance of faith so much, there's nothing at all, there, I mean absolutely nothing that can hinder our faith. Because we're going to be made new creatures. We're going to be made perfect. All right? We're going to be given power to do great things, man. Okay? And nothing will be impossible. And guess what? No matter what's in front of you, if you have faith, it can be removed. Regardless of what obstacle is in your way. If you have a little bit of faith, that's enough to start with. But imagine having great faith. Imagine having a faith that's so strong that even a, a, a mountain being in front of you is not capable of being in your way. Because through Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, all things are possible. Because he's the one answering to our faith. <laughs> that's all. The reason why things happen when you believe is because he's pleased by it and he's like, okay, I'm going to work for you. That's why faith matters. So nothing will be impossible to the Lord's elect. Faith can move mountains as the saying goes. So Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 2. Hebrews 6 and 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Mashiach, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward the power of the doctrine of baptism and, excuse me, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on the hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So that's the power that comes with being in this ministry. Eventually, we're going to be made judges. We're going to be given power to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. We're going to be given power to judge the earth. We're going to be able to raise the dead. So in our kingdom, let's say something happens to a heathen. They may actually come to us, beg for forgiveness to see if we can show mercy on someone's uh, wife, someone's husband, someone's father. <laughs> You're all right. Someone's father or someone's mother. These things will show our power, which will ultimately glorify the heavenly father through his only begotten son. So we're not doing this for nothing. Okay. And this will we do if the power permit. And guess what? In our kingdom, it's going to be permitted. But even on this side, we may be able to do some of these things. We might raise someone from the dead who went through the guillotine. We might raise someone from the dead as we're on the run. And someone might say they believe and they've seen your video before. And ask you for a blessing. And the Lord might give you the power to cure them from a disease. Or to raise some up, or someone up from the dead that had recently just died before them that they care about. These things can happen. And if you believe, why would it be impossible unto you? And have tasted. Let's jump back. Verse 4. Hebrews 6 and 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. And we're made partakers of the Holy Spirit. So being in this ministry, you're being made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Being in this ministry, you have to understand the power that comes with it. The men in the past who are back here today for the majority, who were performing miracles, they were performing miracles with this word. Because they had this word in them. They had the spirit of Yahweh while Yahweh was shy in them. So for you to come into this ministry and fall out, you tasted the heavenly gift and you just cast it away. It's impossible for you to act as if you never fell out and try to come back like nothing happened. Okay? And have tasted the good word 
of the power and the powers of the world to come. Because in our world, all of these magnificent miracles that you read about, we're going to have the ability to do these things. If they shall fall away to renew them again into repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the son of power afresh and put him to an open shame. So Yahweh Shai is not going to go to that cross again for the nation of Israel. He did it once and once only. He's not going to do it again. So if you fall out for him to ask you to, excuse me, if you fall out for you to ask him for forgiveness, you're basically saying, Lord, can you go to the cross again? No, he went to the cross for you to turn back that one time, although you might go off at times, but to turn back and to not go back into the world. Okay. Let's go to Acts. This is Acts chapter 9 and verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple. <laughs> a certain disciple. Hell no. Nah. Now there was at Joppa <laughs> a certain disciple named Tabitha which by interpretation is called Dorcas this woman was full of good works and alms deeds which she did and it came to pass in the house and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died whom when they had washed they laid her in an upper chamber and for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Because obviously they had some belief knowing that this was possible through Peter, who was the head of the church. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them but Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body saith Tabitha arise and she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter she sat up so Peter, he performed a great miracle by raising up this woman from the dead. That's the great power that comes with serving Yahweh Shai. That's the great power that comes with this doctrine. Okay? And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he was called, the saints and widows presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. So you know how many people would believe in the Lord if miracles were performed? You know how easy of a thing it would be for the Lord to give us that power right now? It's not a hard thing for the Lord to do. But right now we come out here, we're normal men. We're presenting this word openly as normal mortal men who one day are going to be judges over the earth through faith, all right? But right now, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai has given us this word to teach this word. And guess what? Eventually, that power is going to be unlocked within us. Just like in a video game. Certain things only come through progress in the game. Until you progress a certain level, you can't obtain certain things. So as we progress closer to the kingdom, we're going to get stronger and stronger. And these things that we hope for, these things are going to be manifested. Matthews 10. This is the book of Matthews 10 and verse 5. These 12 Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
And as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. So we've been given this power and it's within us right now. Now we might not have done none of these acts in this present life, but that power is within us. And when Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai desires to, he's going to unlock that power that's within us because the kingdom of heaven is within us. You're not gonna have to look at the time or the seasons and ask, okay, when's the kingdom of heaven going to show up when really the kingdom of heaven has been here the whole time? It's within you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But it's starting with you Israelites who know who you are and are following the will of the Lord to the best of your ability. Okay? So we're going to have power to raise the dead, heal the sick. These things we've been given freely. And in our kingdom, this is the power that we're going to have. Walking on water, raising the dead, healing the sick. And these things are going to be shown unto these other nations, seeing our people will never die again. So these miracles will be performed on heathen if we deem them um, worthy enough to receive mercy. All right. And this is after they served their thousand years in slavery. After they received double of what they've done unto us. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 30. For by thee have I run through a troop. By my power have I leaped over a wall. So through Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, King David, he had the ability to fight groups of men and conquer them. To leap over walls. Just like when you look at Michael Jordan, when Michael Jordan was in his prime, he was known to metaphorically jump out the gym. You know, a lot of Judah is known for, you know, having that ability to, to soar through many heights. You know, back when I was, you know, younger, I had the ability to jump really high. I was really fast, you know, and seeing that King David had the ability to leap over walls, imagine the power that we're going to have once we're given that new body, once we're changed. And these are things that King David did while being in a mortal body. How much when we become immortals, okay, in the house of David, become as gods? How much more then? Verse 31, 2 Samuel 22 and 31. As for the power... His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is the power save the Lord Yahweh? And who is a rock save our power? The power is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. So our power comes through Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And he's going to make us perfect. He's going to make us indestructible. He maketh my feet like hind's feet. A hind would be like a deer. Basically, he had good balance in war. Being able to do flips, leap over walls, you know, doing all these things and having a, a nice balance about yourself. A hey, balance matters during battle, man. Okay? He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in my arms. So imagine being able to break a bow of steel with your arms. Now, people, they say, well, I could break through a brick. A brick is not a bow of steel. OK, a bow of steel to be broken. Hey, man, that 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 takes some real strength. And not only that, I believe steel is one of the hardest solids, man. Verse 36. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. 
thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. And I have consumed them and wounded them and they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet for thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me has thou subdued under me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. And that's the power that's coming to the house of David. Seeing that David was a man of war, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai gave him the power to kill thousands of men in battle. That's why during the time of uh, uh, King David and Saul, the women being groupies, being fanatical, they said Saul, he killed thousands, but David, he killed tens of thousands. David had a lot of bodies, man. Because he was given that power from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. How much more when we're given those new bodies and made immortal, made incorruptible. We'll be able to take down thousands of heathen in battle just for fun. You might have your slaves and say, okay, I'm going to take a thousand of my slaves and I'm going to put the spirit on all of them to challenge me just so I can destroy them for the fun of it. That's the power we're going to have, man. All right. Let's go forward. Judges chapter 15. Judges chapter 15, and I believe it's verse... <clears throat> Judges 15 and verse 15. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said... With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. So this is Samson, a man who had great power while being in a mortal body. Slew thousands of men with the jawbone of an ass. Not a sword, okay, not a spear, a jawbone of an ass, just to show the Lord's power. So once we become immortal, how much more us when we're changed? Imagine the power we're going to have. Okay? If the Lord can allow men who are in mortal bodies to do great things, how much more when he changes us? First Kings chapter 18 and verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord Yahweh power of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the power in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, Yahweh, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord power and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed and burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water and that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord power, he is the power or the Lord Yahweh, he is the power. The Lord Yahweh, he is the power. So once we receive that power, we'll be able to do certain things through Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. If our heathens that are under us in our subjection want to go against the grain, so to speak, we'll be able to call fire down from heaven through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. And there'll be times I'll be wanting to do that right now with you people. And there'll be times where <laughs> I can understand the frustration that some of the prophets of old that went through because people are very rebellious, man. Okay? But doesn't that sound like something from a Marvel comic or from a DC comic to be able to call down fire from heaven? Now, we have a power behind us, man, that is able to do these things. 
And these miracles that have been performed is through Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, not through men, but through our power. And when I say our power, not our own will, but our power being he who we serve is our power. Okay? Revelations 11. Chapter 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, speaking of the southern and northern kingdom, which collectively all the 12 tribes of Israel. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the power of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So we'll have the power to not only call down fire from heaven, we'll have the power to call out fire out of our mouths, breathe fire upon you. We'll have the power to manipulate the elements. That's what we're holding on for. That's what we endure for, so that we can receive power, man. The real Marvel superhero, so to speak, is based off of the elect of the nation of Israel. Because in our kingdom, which is going to be an everlasting kingdom, it's going to be a highly spiritual kingdom, okay? Imagine being able to see the trees singing. Imagine looking in the background and, and the grass is, is singing. The, the animals are humming, okay? You, you go to another planet and you see neon blue trees that glow in the dark. You see neon blue grass that glows in the dark, okay? We're going to see beautiful things in the kingdom while being able to enjoy it forever. There won't be a time frame on the enjoyment of the Lord's beauty, okay? These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So we're going to have the power to do what the hell we want as often as we want in righteousness. We're going to be given that kind of power. So if you don't want to serve the children of Israel, be prepared to suffer harshly because we're going to be made judges of the earth. And we're going to have access to all the earth, not just certain parts of the earth like Esau, but we're going to have access to all the earth. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So if we endure, the Lord's going to give us power to fly. The Lord is going to give us power to not ever get weary. To just run forever. Imagine just being able to run forever and not get tired. Just like how you'll see certain equipment, certain mechanical equipment, it just keeps going and going and going. Because it has an energy source. It has a power source that's, you know, kicking it off to do such a thing. Well, our power, being Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, is going to make us on a level so much, we can run to and fro from this planet, that planet, this planet, and not even get tired. And that's not even speaking of our chariot that we'll have. See, we're going to be on such a level. Yeah, we'll have chariots. The chariots is just to add to our style. We won't even need a chariot to travel because us on our own will be quick. Us on our own will be indestructible. But the chariot just adds to it. Okay? But they that wait upon the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And right now, we get weary. We get tired. Even those in our prime. 
those of us, you know, in our teens, early 20s, worn out, man, because of this society really weighing down on you. Even if you try to do better, it doesn't take away that this society is destroying our people. Let's go to the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. And that's the power we're going to have. We'll have the speed like flash. In fact, we'll be quicker than flash. And we're going to judge not only the 12 tribes, we're going to have the power to judge every single being on earth. Yeah, how about Shemiah Bushai is going to bring the 144,000 up on a level that has never been seen before. That's unheard of outside of what the Bible expresses. Okay? Outside of what we bring out through the Holy Spirit. Okay? They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And I understand the truth. And the truth is we're going to receive power. We're going to receive everything that our hearts ever desired. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. And he had care for his elect. And the elect have everything coming to them. The elect of the nation of Israel have everything coming to them. Okay, we're going to have all of our heart's desires. We're going to be capable of doing things that are literally impossible. To men. Let's go to 2 Samuels. Second Samuels chapter 3 and verse 1. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. So the house of David is going to keep on waxing stronger and stronger until that day that they become immortal, until that day they become indestructible. That's what we're waiting on. Right now, the house of David can die like men, but the house of David eventually is going to be made into being immortal. Zechariah 13 and 9, and I will bring the third part through the fire, speaking of the house of David, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my power. This is... Zechariah 12 and 8 In that day shall the Lord defend The inhabitants of Jerusalem And he that is feeble Among them at that day Shall be as David And I just read earlier The type of ability that David had Through the spirit of the Lord He was able to leap walls He had perfect balance So that he wouldn't slip He was able to slay thousands of men in battle Like what you will see in a, in a Jet Li movie Well guess what This, this really happened this is our history. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. In the house of David, in the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. So right now, we're gods, but we're going to die like men for some of us, but we're going to be made gods that don't die. We're going to be made gods with everlasting life, with the strength that can't be that, that cannot be comprehended by men okay a level so so high above us that it's hard to explain it it makes me stutter on my uh, speech when i'm trying to break it down okay this is Zechariah Let 
You know what? Let's hold that. I might not even grab that one. We'll leave. Let's leave Zechariah. Let's go to John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the power, even to them that believe on his name. So in order to receive power, you have to believe on the name. Not everybody's given the name. Now, we, we say it openly, but not everybody's able to receive that name. And that name being Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But we do this for the elect. We do this for the believers. In hopes that the Lord will get this thing wrapped up, man. That's why all these things are happening throughout the earth. And we're in World War III right now. It's not even a rumor because the Lord is about to give us power to rule over the whole entire earth as was promised in the Bible. But in order for that to really come to fruition, this gospel has to go throughout the earth. And then not only that, you need the names, man. You need the names to be delivered. All right? You ain't got the names, you're not going to make it. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the power, even to them that believe on his name. You need the names. Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai. All right? Psalms 116. And I'll wrap it up after this. Psalms 116 and 13. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. So be looking to them new bodies. Be looking forward to an everlasting kingdom. And how could you have an everlasting kingdom with a corruptible body that dies? That's not an everlasting kingdom. An everlasting kingdom comes with rulers who have everlasting bodies who don't die. And that's going to be the blessing that's given to the elect of the nation of Israel down to the rest of our people. But the elect are going to be the top. The elect are going to really enjoy all the perks of the kingdom of heaven. Just like in this kingdom, you have levels, man. Everybody's not equal, so to speak. Well, in our kingdom, everybody's not going to be equal. Everybody's not going to be on the same level. There is going to be order. There is going to be a ranking system. But you don't have to worry about dying again. You don't have to worry about sickness. You don't have to worry about your wife committing adultery on you. You don't have to worry about none of these type of things. And these are the promises given to the children of Israel. So let's read this again. Psalms 116 and 3. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. So we're looking forward to that victory. We're looking forward to deliverance because with that cup of salvation comes with change, a drastic change. Our bodies being made different, being made incorruptible because right now we're subject to all sorts of, you know, things that are not um, profitable to us at all. So Lord willing, this lesson, it was simple and edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Be looking forward to that power. Be looking forward to the promises that have been promised unto us. Okay? And not only that, we'll be able to do great things. Matter of fact, I got to find that one. We'll be able to do great things that aren't even written in the book. John chapter 21 and 25. And there are also many other things which Yahweh Shai did, the which, if they should be written, everyone I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. And guess what? All of the examples that Yahweh Shai had shown us will be able to perform greater things. Not that we'll be greater than our Lord, but the examples that he's shown us Okay, written in the Bible and not written in the Bible, we'll be able to do those things. So be looking forward to some great things in our kingdom, in our future. That should uplift your spirit.
that should give you hope and confidence. So I'm going ahead and wrap it up and give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. And you already know what his name is. All right. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Yahweh Until next time, Lord willing, this was simple and edifying. I'm out. Shalom.